Moby Dick, Herman Melville's classic, clocks in at over 2,100,000 words. That's 211,000 words, if I could get my words out properly today. With each one of those unique words repeated on average nine times. Origin of Species, that's just over 155,000 words, with a repeat factor of 22. What does this all mean? That I am Evo Terra, and this is the Books and Beer Hangout. Welcome, everyone, to another episode of Books and Beer. My name is Jeff Moriarty, and tonight's episode, we are going to be talking about words, these little tiny evil things that inhabit all of our works and how to kill some of them. Our special guest today is Patrick McLean, a writer and uh, writing coach, and I'm going to turn it over to him to introduce himself and tell us what he is drinking tonight. Patrick. Tonight, uh, I didn't really have time to get lovely craft beer, so I, this is now books and bourbon, as far as I'm concerned. Got enough. So, if, you know, I've got plenty if anybody watching wants them. Um, yeah, so uh, I've written a few books, uh, the How to Succeed in Evil series, uh, did some podcasting, uh, the Shauna Key. Um, I started off as an advertising creative director and copywriter, and have just kept writing and writing and writing. I don't know, 18 years or so, um, and I help uh, executives and businesses with their words and uh, and authors as well. Just anybody who has to uh, has to put a lot of words on a page and say something clearly and well. Uh, and I have some unique ways of doing that that are real time, shorter feedback loops. And I do that as part of my company, Good Words Right Order. All right, uh, Evo, you want to go next and share your your drink? I can. You're supposed to. But uh, I am drinking the Dale's Pale Ale, one of my classic standards for the evening. All right. Um, I'm also a Dale's fan, but tonight I'm trying something new, and we'll see if I can make it through to the end of the hangout. Oh, God, what'd uh, you do this time? Uh, it is Tanea Creek's uh, Old Jackalope Barley Wine. So I have a bomber of, I don't know, 10 point something percent barley wine that I'm going to be chugging over here. So, right, so, hmm. yeah, so could be worse, could be mead. <laughs> yes, I suppose that is true. So uh, let's kind of get things started right off the bat. So why are people so terrible at writing? And where did it all go wrong? Well, there's, that, that's, that's a very involved question. One of the problems is that people don't, whoa, do we get focus here or? Um, We're on it. Okay. Um, one of the problems is they really stopped teaching a certain kind of writing. And the writing that drives everybody nuts that I, that I started off trying to deal with is writing for business. And at some point uh, around 1950, let's say, uh, colleges stopped having larger departments of rhetoric than they did of literature. People started talking about literature and their feelings rather than trying to write clearly and persuasively and speak clearly and persuasively. And that led to a pretty, um, pretty significant shift in things that we can all see. So like uh, Bill Ford Jr. said something about Ford. He said uh, that, that Ford's mission was to right size their global footprint and develop and sell more great products around the world. But Henry Ford, um, three, four generations before said of the same company that his job was to democratize the automobile and uh, that everyone who, when he was done, most everyone would have one and everyone would be able to afford one. And they're just two totally different. One's very clear, one's very to the point. The other one is just just messed up. I mean, it just doesn't really say anything. So I blame part of this on also on things like the SAT, where there's a premium put on very large words that might not be appropriate for what you're trying to say. And also for the, and everybody's had this, the what I call the end page essay, where uh, you know you have to write the 10 page essay. When the goal is to write something in two pages and have it be good. So that's that's where everybody goes wrong in, in everyday life that we all have to deal with and hurts us. So you, you, interesting things you brought up there is that, that the word counts um, are, are sometimes at fault here. You know, in school I had to write a 10-page essay or whatever essay. You know, it's, it's funny to me uh, in, in my writing, in the business writing, is uh, sometimes I have a tough time getting it down to a, to a small enough number. I, I'm, I'm a wordy bastard as I am, have want to be told uh, all the time. 
So, and, and is that just part of my upbringing, or do I do? How do I fix that? Well, you know, I, I've I've read your stuff, and you have a very nice style. So, what? Uh, it's like telling the girls you've got a nice personality. Okay, great. No, I'm back. no, you actually, you actually, you, you write like you talk, and you talk well. It's very entertaining. What I look at is, so if you look at Melville, right? He he's trying to do something with the way he's writing, and there's, a, I mean, he you wrote an encyclopedia, he wrote a nature documentary inside the novel. But um, is it is some? Can someone get to their aim? Can they get to what they're trying to do? Um, you know, without with using less words. So if if you look at like old pro stylists like Samuel Johnson or you know, H.L. Mencken, they have these big wordy styles, right? If you try and cut anything out of there, you start to lose the effect they were going for and the meaning. This is different than just using too many words for using too many words' sake. So it's not that someone can't have a unique style and it can't be them or natural the way they write. Um, you know, not everybody writes like Hemingway, but it, if, if somebody, you know, or, or you know, Cormac, Cormac McCarthy's latest stuff, um, but if if you're just if you're not efficient with what you're doing in terms of the, uh, the shape of the story or the way the words you're using, you, you're getting in the way of what you're trying to accomplish, and you're making it harder for the reader to get your message. Can Can you give a, a specific example, maybe a, a personal pet peeve that you have when you read or that you see frequently that people are being taught they use all the time, and you're like, if I could kill that one thing, it would be what? Well. Um, generally speaking, adjectives and, and adverbs all have to die. I mean, if you, if you can, if all you can, them? yeah, mostly all of them. Uh, any words, mostly. words ending in ly or ing should be suspect. Um, what what happens is is, uh, it, and and for the purposes of fiction too, the thing that drives me nuts is, you know, where it, instead of he walked across the room, it's he started across the room boldly with a gleam in his eye. You know that kind of. He thought about starting across the room, then he put his left foot in front of his, you know, if, if you have information without suspense, um, those, those are words that don't really move the, the, the narrative along, and it, it really, it's painful. Or, you know, if, if you, uh, the, the stuff where, um, you know, Sally Wilson drove her new sports car into the, uh, into the car wash, Sam, the car wash attendant, said, Sally, that's a nice new sports car. Like you don't need to do both. Just pick one, and we move along faster. So, is that sense? something that 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 you think editors are on the on the lookout for, uh, or is that something that writers need to to learn on their own? It's, um, I mean, that's the skill of writing. Editors have to be on the lookout for that. But we're everyone who's who's writing is is all constantly learning. Right. So you want to just try and find better and better ways to get it's it's like the question of where you start a story right i mean the the famous the famous advice is in media race in the middle of things like the story started you know you get there kind of a little late and and you get out kind of early for every scene right um the question is how can you figure out how little of the scene you need to tell or you need to, to really move the story across because if you, if you focus on details that aren't important it slows things down but if you leave out details that are important, it destroys the richness of the story. So my whole point is here is that there is a tr there is always a trade-off. The more words you use, especially um, especially now when everyone's so distracted and out of time, uh, the, the harder the harder it gets. Well, and, and it sounds it sounds to me like that's not the kind of stuff that you should be looking to an editor to help you with. That's the kind of stuff you should do ahead of time to help your editor out, so that they can do other things with your work and, and not that. So I know we we've talked about you as as a as a writing coach. So quickly tell us the difference between a writing coach and an editor. Where where would you fit in that spectrum? Well, um, I. Uh, it's, it's a very good question. An, an editor is trying to get a book done, as far as I can tell. Uh, a writing coach is, is more, like a, more like a personal trainer for writing. And it's a mixture of cowboy speeches, and then they show up, so you have to show up. And there's a, there's a collaborative process that's really important here. Like, like there's a, been a renaissance in great writing for television. And one of the reasons is that writers, have, uh, writers work collaboratively for television. So like if you listen to the uh, Ron Moore's Writers Room podcast uh, for Battlestar Galactica, the ideas evolve and they get batted back and forth. As writers of 
fiction and ebook sometimes well by the nature of it you have to spend a lot of time alone and you're sitting there and you're not necessarily getting good feedback and maybe you show it to somebody who's your um, you know who's your friend um, and your friend is not going to give you good advice uh, so th there is in, in all the work I do with the teaching and the coaching uh, it's a shorter I create a shorter feedback loop so if you think about am I getting better as a writer I send something out and six months back I get a rejection letter that's a very very long feedback loop yeah um, so helping to have someone, you know, to bounce ideas off and, 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 and keep morale up and show you not only with the words, but also with the larger ideation um, on, on, a, on a more professional level. It's, it's, it's very strange. And, and you, uh, you and I have been in the same rooms like this where you'll have people, um, they're, both, they're both writers, you know, they're both struggling or whatever, but they, they, don't, they don't really get along and they can't talk to each other in, in like a nice way. They have to be, oh, I'm so much better than this hack. And the other guy's like, well, I'm so much better than her. She's such a hack. And that just doesn't help anybody. Like, uh, you, need, you, need, you need back and forth. You need honest feedback and stuff. So let me ask you a question about where this falls in the writing process. And, and maybe this gets to the difference between writing coach and editor. So when, when you talk about wanting to kill these words I, and removing yeah, adjectives. I got it. I got it. I got the answer to your question. Um, an editor is is like somebody who is standing uh, outside the trench, like if you're if you if you're writing as a battle, and he's saying, "Hey, you should shoot those guys over there. You should you should do this. You do that. You do this. You do this." A, a writing coach is a guy who gets down next to you and goes, "Okay, what are we gonna do now?" You know, they're on the same they're on your team, and uh, th that's kind of how I look at it. Does that answer your question? I think so, but like, do you really do you recommend that people worry about this stuff in a first draft? You've got ideas, especially in fiction. You're just getting stuff on paper. Should you be really trying to keep this thing tight, or is that something that you're going to work through kind of as you go? If you get this draft done, but then look at it and evolve your style over time versus worrying about it in an individual draft. Well, and... half half of what I talk about is how to. Uh you know, how to cut words and how to, the rewriting process. And I, I show the rewriting process. It's very hard to see from just marks on a page. Um, the other half is the, the actual process of writing. And it, it's very interesting that um, anything that keeps the words flowing is fine. Um, there, there are some commonalities and there are some things that all professional writers do to generate a lot of words. What's interesting is uh, if you look at it, every definition of writing um, that you can find, I have the uh, you can't, it's right there. I have the Oxford English Dictionary over there. And uh, every single sense of the word um, writing it, it involves either typing or uh, putting marks on a page uh, or scribing things into stone. But that's actually not the process. The process is, is, is everything you do to come up with your idea, everything you do to keep the words flowing, the process by which you get them down, how you maintain your focus. So if you it, it's a little tough for people initially to think about writing because all they think about is is the word count, and uh, or, or in in a in a professional context they think about things like grammar. Well, uh, the best the best definition I found of the process of writing um, it involves uh, grammar, syntax, diction, um, usage, and it involves ideation, the emotional challenge of writing. Um, uh, other, a lot of other things. There's many pieces to it. And when people only focus on grammar and tips like that, they don't focus on the oh, subject matter knowledge and general knowledge. They don't focus on how this incredibly complex mental task happens. And, okay, so, uh, so what yeah. would you give, what advice would you give to somebody watching this tips right now that they could take away and use? Um, use some kind of structure to think about your larger idea. This can be index cards, it can be anything, but it's always easier to play with it in some sort of, and visual is really good, some sort of structure rather than try and write it all. So think, if, find some way to think about it without having to write it, because writing takes too long. The second thing is read everything out loud. I've heard this, I heard this advice for a long time until I did a podcast, I did uh, an episode, I did a, a, a short, piece of fiction or an essay every week for a year for 2005 
until I actually read it out loud. I was like, yeah, that's great advice, blah, 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 but I'm good, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. Read everything out loud and it will immediately get better. You will find your voice easier. And the, the third piece of advice is cross out every, every adjective, every adverb, every adverbial phrase, every adjectival phrase, and see if you can make the thing still work. Uh, well, and that's... That is what we're going to try and do, Patrick, if you've got a few more minutes. And for those of you watching live, congratulations. You're going to get to watch us do some of that editing. Actually, not us. You're going to watch, get, watch Patrick do that live in our hangover. And if you're not watching live, well, sorry. Maybe you should uh, find out when we're recording next time and you can get in on this fun stuff. That's over at booksandbeer.com where you can also find links to Patrick and lots of show notes from us over here. Patrick, very uh, much should... thanks you, thanks to you for being on the program today. Well, thank you for having me. Also, you should mention that uh, I have a couple of uh, writing ebooks, not the least of which is uh, How to Kill a Word, which is a pretty nice little uh, introduction to these ideas. So, Very cool. Well, we'll you. make sure we put a link to that uh, in the show notes as well. All right, so that's going to do it. The Books and Beer Hangout is a production of ePublish Unum. We help authors survive and thrive in a digital world. For more information about our classes and other educational offerings, please visit us at epublishunum.com. For Jeff Moriarty, I'm Evo Terra. Thanks for watching.